Within a five mile radius, just about any community in Houston, one can experience food from around the world. Indian, Mediterranean, Greek, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, Thai, Italian, South American, British, Cuban, and of course, Tex-Mex. It's this mixture of culture and cuisine that make the Bayou City a melting pot of taste. We're here to experience them all and serve you food without borders. You know, Texas is known for many things food-wise, our steaks, our barbecue, our seafood, but really Tex-Mex is the staple of every true Texan's diet. And you've got Tex-Mex places literally stretching from Beaumont all the way to El Paso. But if you want to get some real Tex-Mex, stay away from those newbie fusion places. Check out some places that have been around for more than 50 years, just like Spanish Village. Patricia, how are you? I'm great. Great to see you again, Todd. Thanks for having us out here to Spanish Village. Absolutely. Now, uh, I must admit it's taken me a long time to get to Spanish Village, but Spanish Village has been around for quite a while here in the Houston area. It's a staple of, uh, of uh, Houston dining. Yep, it's a Houston institution. You know, we're located close to the Med Center, and we've got who's who of Houston coming through here, right. doctors, lawyers, presidents. And actually, an interesting thing about the the building is that it was originally created to be a house. In the it early looks like it was added on. You look like you got started here, went out here, went out here, went out there. That's right. It was in the early 1900s, it was built as a home. And you can see if you know that now, looking at the two areas, they used to be open patio. Mm -hmm. And people would enjoy their food and beverages out on the patio. But there were two large oak trees that people kept complaining about all the leaves falling on them and the food and such. And so they took the oak trees out and then it was too hot. And they had canopies until AC came into fashion in right. the 60s. So they closed off one of these areas and people were able to enjoy the AC. You know, they, they actually used to come just right down the road here to the Majestic Theater just to sit and watch just a movie in the AC. Yeah. Right. So that was the big deal at the time. And then they got their first AC bill and then we, they saw Grandpa opening up all the windows and saying, <laughs> I think people really prefer fresh air. It's fresh air they want. So they, they could sit in here and I imagine sip their margaritas while they were either in the AC or without the AC. Huh? Well now, it's interesting. In the beginning, of course, right. it wasn't legal, because they opened in 1953, it wasn't legal for you to have alcohol by the glass. So mm -hmm. they had a private club upstairs so they could issue this temporary membership right. so people could go upstairs and enjoy their uh, their beverages, you know. There's and still many parts of Texas that do that, that have those club memberships right. that they have to do, right? Right, right. And they would have live music. You know, we had Roberto uh, Zenteno and his, yeah, his daughter yeah, Norma Zenteno yeah. would play up there with a the band and people would relax and dance and enjoy the music. But then, of course, when they changed that law and you could have the alcohol by the glass, people couldn't just come into the dining room like they do today and just sip and enjoy their margaritas. But I noticed this place, it's the margaritas are one thing and it's about the food, but it seems like it's a very family festive atmosphere. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Generations after generation of families come to Spanish Village. It's very, very centered around the family. We've got the pictures that the kids have created. All around you'll see Polaroid photos of people that love Spanish Village and having special memories or just together for every occasion at Spanish Village is, is going to be kind of special. They stopped doing the Polaroids in 2008 because they stopped making that film. Then they had digital frames right. and now of course they post this whole special moments on Facebook. Well I know it's more than just about the pictures and the festive activities. Those are one part of it but really it's about the food. So what do you say we go back to the kitchen and take a look at some of your signature dishes that have kept you guys going for so long? Absolutely. Let's right. do it. Sounds good. At XCC, the material science program focused on two specialized education and workforce training programs, corrosion technology and welding technology. At XCC, the material science center of excellence provides the students the best education and training, enabling them to pursue with confidence the opportunity that today's job market has to offer. An engineering career is a wonderful career. 
The HEC Engineering Center of Excellence created a new degree which allows students to take the first two years of a four-year engineering program here at ACC, and then they transfer to an upper division college. Total tuition cost for that four-year degree is under $20,000. More than a million engineers will be retiring over the next 10 years. We need to educate the next generation of engineers, not just for Houston or Texas, but for the country. Here at the Center of Excellence for Advanced Manufacturing, we've got programs in machining technology, and we've got programs in manufacturing engineering technology. Based on the strengths of our faculty and the state-of-the-art facilities, combined with hands-on learning, students completing our program will have the greatest chances within manufacturing. Manufacturing touches all of us every day in everything that we do. Come to HCC and become a part of tomorrow's future. The construction COE is like a big umbrella. We have several disciplines goes underneath it. Construction technology, plumbing, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, industrial electricity, and solar uh, technology. The students are excited to be a part of this program because they realize that it is positioning them to outshine the competition. Yeah, at the Houston Community College, we focus on the future. The transition the student from Houston Community College to the workplace, it will be seamless. We're in the kitchen here at Spanish Village with Patricia and you know being in business for 50 years you guys got to be doing some things right. Yeah. Absolutely. So everybody does fajitas at Tex-Mex restaurants. What makes your special? Well, we use only all natural beef or chicken or you can get a combo of both. Right. It's got a special blend of family secret recipe spices. Yeah, imagine marinated. you marinated it for a while. Of over. course, yeah. Right. And we serve these up all day long. It's, everything is made fresh. There's no hormones in the meat and it's served with charro beans and rice. It's just a favorite here at Spanish Village. And you've got it, you know, one of the things I notice when I go into a, a restaurant, especially a Tex-Mex restaurant, I can tell right away if they're doing it right, but when they put the chips and the salsa on, this, on the table. But the second thing is when the fajitas come out because everybody's got to have fajitas. Yeah, sizzling, everybody, it definitely turns heads as people are walking by to deliver those fajitas. Um, you're right about the chips and salsa, and, just so you know, they will offer baked chips on request. So you have baked option for a little bit healthier, but let's face it, it's Tex-Mex, you know, you don't want to, <laughs> you, you got to have it fried in the oil there, you know? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so we got some fajitas going. Let's take a look at what he's got on the grill and we'll get to the next dish. All right, so you got your fajitas and I imagine to get that right spice in them, you guys marinate them for a while. Oh yeah, for at least 24 hours. And when you order them, they're out on the table pretty quickly. Yeah, it takes about five minutes, really. That's one thing about Tex-Mex here in Houston as well, is it, it, people want their food and they want it pretty quick. That's right, good food fast. Good food fast, and especially if they're coming in at lunchtime, which I imagine you guys get a huge crowd. Oh, we do, we do. Lunchtime, dinner time, weekends. Uh, a lot of people even reserve the whole restaurant on the days that are closed. Perfect. We're going to check in with Rourke, who always has something special. But first, I'm going to check up on my emails. We'll be back. Thanks, Todd. I'm Rourke McGaffin. I'm at Houston Community College TV with Lorena Salas, who's Hi. in the uh, Culinary Arts program here. Uh, you're in the baking program, the baking correct? Program. And yes. your specialty is vegan pastries. Vegan pastries. And what are yeah. we making today? Uh, we are making vegan truffles. Okay. And, and I see we have our ingredients here. I know we're starting with the... Yeah, with the cocoa butter. The we cocoa only need butter. a few ingredients, but we are starting with the cocoa butter. We need to melt it. I see. Very important. And only to use the steam of the water. No, I gotcha. We don't it's want a modified double boiler. Uh, the bowl is not actually in the water. It's yeah, just it's the not in the steam. water. So I see it's, it's getting kind of shiny now. So it's starting to melt. Yeah. And uh, once it breaks down the cocoa butter, it needs to rest. A few minutes until it gets uh, room temperature. 
I see. Because we need all the ingredients at the same temperature. And it's very if, important. It, if this is too hot, it could uh, separate. Separate, yeah, from okay. the mixture. And we're yeah. trying to avoid that. Yeah, we, we have to avoid that. So you want it just barely melted. No, correct? we need to melt everything. Okay, so you we need liquid. Melt it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So once it's all that clear liquid. Yeah, we need like a gold liquid, you see? I do. It's very, very quick. We just need a few, a couple of minutes, no more. And then after, uh, after it's melted down and it rests, then you're going to combine it with your other ingredients, yeah, which is... Yeah, blend. You use some nut butters. I know there's some... Uh, what, cashew butter? We have cashew butter and almond butter. All right, so the cocoa butter has been melted and it has rested for about five minutes so it's at room temperature and not too warm. Mm -hmm. It's very important uh, when we mix it with the water, it keeps it from separating. So now we're gonna assemble the ingredients. Mm -hmm. We have so, to use the blender, a oh, high right. speed blender. Gotcha. So we need first the liquid ingredients Three tablespoons of maple syrup. You can throw that right in here. Oh, do you still need this yeah. measure? Okay. Now, three tablespoons of cocoa so powder. Equal parts cocoa powder. Yeah. Around three tablespoons of right. each. And you can dump these in real quick. We got yeah. how much of the? The same. And three how much of the cocoa butter? I mean, I'm sorry, how much of the cashew butter? All. We have around two tablespoons. All right. Two tablespoons. And then how much of the almond butter? Four. Because we need six tablespoons of two. nut butter. That's about three. That's about four. And then just, just put the blender out. Now first we have to blend this mixture. Now that it's very, in, it's incorporated everything, we have to add our vanilla, just a quarter of spoon, of, t of All teaspoon. Right. And the pinch of salt. Yeah, to balance the sweetness, it's very important in desserts. And two tablespoons of water. All right. One and two. and blend again. So now it's all blended and we're putting it in the bowl now, right? Yeah. So we have a nice smooth paste and we have to place it in the freezer. It's okay. You go ahead and put it right in there. So this we're going to freeze uh, for about 30 minutes to get it the right consistency and then we're going to roll out the truffles. Well, I've held out for as long as I can. I have to try one of these. Mm. These are fantastic. If you want to learn how to make these, check online. We have the recipes posted. Mm. We look at consumer arts and sciences and we're looking at the creative economies of Houston. The consumer arts and sciences is just that. We deliver services for the greater Houston area. Our faculty and staff are industry experts, and so they have worked closely with their industry partners, whether it's cosmetology, hair design, fashion design, interior design, merchandising, and our culinary arts program. Now our industry partners know exactly who to go to. Media and visuals and audio is how we communicate in this world today. Students need to understand how to create that content, how to discuss that content, and distribute it around the world. The Center of Excellence for Media Arts and Technology uh, comprises four different areas. We have audio production, filmmaking, music business, 
in our digital communications program. We're going to teach you the skills that you're going to need to go out and go to work in the workforce. The Center of Excellence for Visual and Performing Arts houses programs in art, dance, drama, and music, where we rigorously prepare our students for transfer to four-year institutions. The Center of Excellence for Visual and Performing Arts provides the curriculum, training, and opportunity for our students not only to enter into the creative industries, but to master lifelong skills that will serve them in whatever profession they pursue. Creativity is at the center of our excellence. Here at the Center of Excellence for Advanced Manufacturing, we've got programs in machining technology, and we've got programs in manufacturing engineering technology. Based on the strengths of our faculty and the state-of-the-art facilities, combined with hands-on learning, students completing our program will have the greatest chances within manufacturing. Manufacturing touches all of us every day in everything that we do. Come to HCC and become a part of tomorrow's future. Okay, see, I imagine you have favorite customers here who come in here for so long, they wind up making up their own dishes. Oh, absolutely. And you have one you're going to show me. Yes, yes. By far, you know, the enchiladas a la Taylor has got to be one of our most popular dishes. It's got multiple write-ups in the TV and print right. reviews. And it is two enchiladas with sharp cheddar cheese and onions on the inside. Then it's topped with ground beef and they use only all fresh natural beef that they trim and grind themselves. Wow. Then it's got chili con carne made fresh in house, more sharp cheddar cheese, more, cheese. more onions, another cheese, and then, and then it's served with it rice and oven? beans. Okay, all right, now I understand we have one in the oven right here. We do, we all have right. one in the oven. Can we prepare that one? Let's get it out and see how you top it off. Now, I guess with this dish, it's all about the toppings after it as well. Yes. This is just part of it. Now you get the good stuff on top, right? Yeah, and to, to mention, it's, it's actually, this enchilada Zyla Taylor is named after Don Taylor, which is a, one of the longtime Spanish Villas patrons. I got you, I got you. And how long has this dish been uh, in, under creation, many years? Gosh, it's hard to say, maybe 20 years. Wow, at least 20 years. There you have it, enchiladas a la Taylor, and those are the condiments that go with it. You got your guacamole, it looks like. Yep. The you got your guacamole, onions, tomato, and more cheese, of course. Yes. Enchiladas a la Taylor. Cool. Delicious. Cool. Everybody Let's loves this in. dish. My first visit to Spanish Village was in 1985 and I really enjoyed uh, coming to the restaurant and having their margaritas. The managing partner at the time was Larry Pico whom we started developing a very good relationship with and uh, we got talking about uh, food and uh, one of the things that uh, I told him I really enjoyed was a good uh, cheese enchilada. Uh, on his menu, he had a cheese enchilada that was a more of a gravy versus a chili sauce, and he suggested that he work with his chef uh, at the time, Mr. Gamble, to see if they could come up with a good chili gravy uh, for the enchilada, and uh, became a very good uh, cheese enchilada with a chili con carne meat sauce with spices, uh, and uh, he eventually added it to his menu and it became a very popular item. The chalupas, you never do the chalupas, you always do the fajitas. Well, I know, but I'm going wild today. I'm going with <laughs> cheese enchiladas and chalupas. The Public Safety and Automotive Technology Center of Excellence comprises of four major programs. Fire Technology, Law Enforcement, Emergency Medical Services, and Automotive Technology. If your passion is helping others, go to Houston Community College and become a first responder. The healthcare community is one of the largest workforces in Houston. As we move forward into the next five or seven years, the healthcare workforce will be in great needs. 
Houston Community College, Coleman College of Health Science is dedicated to providing and preparing students for the healthcare careers of the future. They get real experiences from someone who's out there working in the field right now. Computers run everything in our lives, and we have built this incredible digital infrastructure. It's a wonderful thing. That infrastructure has to be maintained. HCC's Center of Excellence helps drive the economy by providing local training for local jobs in the technology field. We have computer programming, we have computer networking and telecommunications. We have digital gaming and simulation, and we have geographic information services. If you have a passion for anything, whether it is running a law firm, a hospital, a college, manufacturing aircraft parts, or composing music, whatever it is, and you want to do that as your livelihood, you will have to know something about business. The Business Center of Excellence is made up of eight major programs of study. Each of these programs provides you with the knowledge, skills, and abilities needed in the workplace. Come join us. We are open for business. An engineering career is a wonderful career. The HEC Engineering Center of Excellence created a new degree which allows students to take the first two years of a four-year engineering program here at HCC, and then they transfer to an upper division college. Total tuition costs for that four-year degree is under $20,000. More than a million engineers will be retiring over the next 10 years. We need to educate the next generation of engineers, not just for Houston or Texas, but for the country. The Logistics Center of Excellence has two programs, one of which is the Logistics and Global Supply Chain Management program, as well as the Maritime Specialization. Any student entering the Logistics program here at Houston Community College will walk away with the knowledge needed relevant to industry because our industry partners are engaged in our program to help us develop it to ensure that when our students walk away from here, they can get those jobs. Okay, Todd, so how would you like to taste some of this amazing food? I'm all about the food, so let's all get right. started here. So we've got the uh, fajitas, and as I mentioned earlier, you really can tell a lot from, we'll just pull it right out of here, so from a restaurant, by the way they make the fajitas. These are marinated and cooked perfectly. This is good stuff. You can taste the spices, but it's not, it's not overly spicy heat-wise. It's just, uh, just got that just perfect. Just right. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to move on to the um, enchiladas Taylor now. Yep, enchiladas a la Taylor. And this looks like a very classic Tex-Mex, but you've got a little bit of a twist on it. You've got both ground beef and chili con carne, which is pretty indulgent. Right, right. All right, so let's go. Ahead. So let's try some of that. So... Is this, what would you consider your most popular dish? This here and the, and the uh, fajitas? They, they are, you know, the, the fajitas are just a classic favorite. But this one's become that mm. way. Like I said, this is the one that we get so many write-ups on and mentions oh, yeah. and reviews. It's amazing. If there's a thing for Tex-Mex comfort food, this stuff is it. I mean, <laughs> I could live off this stuff. And look, you've still got, you've still you still got, got a little bit comments. of healthy stuff too? Yeah, you got your, you do have one, one celery stalk. <laughs> but let's face it, when you're eating Tex-Mex, you know, you really, it's all about the indulgence and, and good stuff. Now I hear you guys are known for something that's not traditional Tex-Mex, but it's very Southern. What's that? Oh yes. We've got our fried chicken. This is an awesome dish, fried of course. Fried chicken. Uh, at yes. a Tex-Mex place. Fried chicken. Who would have thought, but everybody loves this. Oh, you that's can also important. order it with either french fries or a baked potato. Right. This is a, a specialty okay, dish. It takes about this. 25 minutes to have these made. So you guys don't pre-make this. This isn't nope. in the, in the, in the heating is, lamps over it. You, you cook it to order. Huh? Absolutely. These are made fresh. And another option, a little more mm -hmm. healthy down here. This one takes 45 minutes, but it's certainly worth the wait. The broiled chicken. But wait a second, before you go to the next, we, we got, we're not finished with the fried chicken <laughs> okay. yet, because this is, this is pretty good stuff. I've yeah. got to admit though, I've gone to restaurants over the past few years where they say, you have to go to the restaurant, order the fried chicken. So you go to the restaurant, you sit down, you order, it takes a while, and you're anticipating the fried chicken comes out, it, it looks wonderful, 
but there's no taste to it. You know, yeah. it's just bland old fried chicken. This stuff is great. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, you've got the crunchiness, the flour. You can tell there's some seasoning in the That's flour. That's that special secret blend of spices again. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the, the fajitas. It's not overbearing, but there's some, there's some flavor, man. The Colonel's got nothing to this, man. This is, <laughs> this is the stuff here in Houston. This is good stuff. Yeah, this is years and years of honing perfect blend of spices. Who'd know? You go into Southeast Houston, you're looking for some Tex-Mex food and you run into a place that has incredible fried chicken. <laughs> we'll be back with more after this. We just basically grind or nix tamal. Uh, this uh, process uh, takes overnight. Uh, it's called nix tamalization. And we use lime powder and then we boil uh, the corn uh, kernels with, uh, with uh, water and uh, we leave them overnight, we rinse them next morning, and uh, we do different ones. We do blue, we do uh, yellow, and we do the, the white ones, the ones that we use for the daily use, yeah. Had a great time here at Caracol with two of HCC's culinary department's finest graduate chefs, Ugo and Ruben Ortega. We made corn tortillas today from scratch. We even made the masa from scratch. Back to you, Todd. Hello, I'm Tarek Smith, and here's your direct energy, direct health tip. Strategies to overcome anxiety. You want to make sure you get enough sleep at night. Nothing is better than a well-rested mind. Exercise daily or stay active because it makes you feel good on the inside. And if sometimes you're feeling overwhelmed, talk to someone so you don't get overloaded. And please, I can't stress this enough, maintain a positive attitude as best and as often as you can. This has been Tarek Smith with your Direct Energy, Direct Health Tip. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us today on Food Without Borders. Make sure you find us on Facebook and also follow us on Twitter. You can join us on our website at hccs.edu slash foodwithoutborders. Check out some live video and recipes. For now, I'm Todd Duplantis and I'll see you next time.